What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with a resource for tape diagrams. So this is part of a tape diagram playlist. Uh, this is lesson one, and the question we're answering today is, what are they? So let's rip the tape off and see what our objective is today. Today, I will be able to identify the four basic types of tape diagrams used for problem solving. So the first question is, what even are they, right? What are tape diagrams? Tape diagrams are four visual models that help represent what is happening in the problem and the relationship between the numbers. So if you do our size check word problem strategy, this would be uh, the D part of that, right? It would be developing a plan or drawing a picture. It's gonna be a great way for someone solving a word problem to visualize what's happening, be able to draw it out. And we love them. We think they're awesome for two different reasons. One, it's going to take students from being dependent to independent thinkers, right? We all know what it's like to have a student come up. They have nothing on their paper except for the word problem. They haven't written anything. They haven't tried anything. And they say, I don't understand what to do. Okay, so first of all, that's why we do our size check problem strategy. But even with this, anybody can draw them out after you've been taught what to do. And it's going to take them from being dependent on you to being able to solve these by themselves. And then it also takes students from memorization to conceptual understanding. So uh, two parts of this. One, what I mean by memorization is we memorize just keywords. Okay, so if it's asking us how many more do you need, you're like, oh, that's subtraction. Or if the word each is in the question stem, sometimes we teach uh, students to say, okay, that's division, right? But it's going to take them from memorizing that to conceptually understanding what's happening in the word problem. And then the other great thing is so many times when we're teaching students word problems, even if we have a strategy for them, we're trying to teach them abstractly, right? We're trying to teach them um, a shortcut for being able to figure out what to do when they're organizing their work. It's going to take them from that and start with a conceptual understanding and then eventually allow them to get back to that abstract thinking because the next step from this is you can even start writing algebra equations from these visual models and that's for some of your high kids where you might want them to be able to go and depending on your classroom that could be your whole class or just a few people an extra challenge of writing those algebra equations from these tape diagrams so let's take a look and meet the fantastic four so the first one is the part whole model we would use this for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So this is one of the ones we use the most. And this is what it looks like. So here we have the whole tape diagram, right? That'd be your number. And then we have three different parts. So sometimes these can be equal groups. Sometimes they're not, right? It just could be anything. So for this tape diagram, um, let's make this part seven. And then you see this part's a little bit smaller than seven, right? So it can't be bigger than seven. So one of the great things about tape diagrams, it's teaching them the relationship between the numbers you have to think about these things. Um, so let's say that's five, okay? And then obviously this is the smallest out of all of them. All right, so let's say this is a word problem, right? And you're talking about apples. So you have uh, maybe seven red apples, five green apples, and two yellow apples, okay? And you're trying to figure out the whole. So here are your three parts of the whole, and obviously your answer would be 14. So the whole entire tape diagram is worth 14, but you're able to show the different parts. And and that's going to be really important when you get into those problems where you're trying to find a missing piece and subtracting. But check out our part whole models for that. We have a couple different ones because we use it for so many. Um, and if you want to know more about that, check those out. Our next one is an additive comparison model. And in an additive comparison model, you can use it for addition or subtraction. Okay. Um, and what you're doing is you are comparing two different quantities, right, by using addition and subtraction. So instead of it all being a part of the same whole, uh, let's say you want to know how many more red apples you had than green apples last time. So I don't exactly remember, but I think there were uh, seven red apples. So you label that red. You had five green apples. You could label that green. And you're looking for this missing piece right here, right? So how many more red apples did you have? In other words, what would you have to add to five to get seven? And obviously you could subtract and you figure out that answer would be two. So it's a great way to visualize when you are comparing two different quantities by using addition and subtraction. You can check out our lessons on that if you want to know a little bit more about that tape diagram. And then our last one, multiplication comparison. And once you get into that middle school math ratio model, and this is used to do multiplication in division. And this is my favorite one right here, okay? And what you're doing is you're comparing using multiplication. So those word problems say times as many as or times more than. 
And you, instead of comparing using addition subtraction, you're comparing the equal groups, right? Um, and so let's just change this now. Um, and let's say you had uh, red baskets of apples, right? And then you had green baskets of apples. And you can see here that the red would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times more than the green. And it's all based on equal groups right here, okay? Um, and this is great because those questions that are, like I said, that have times as many as, sometimes they're asking you to multiply. Sometimes they're giving you um, the information that you need to divide to figure out the other group. Sometimes they're asking you to multiply and divide and then add them all together. And sometimes they're asking you to multiply and divide and then subtract to compare the difference between them, right? And this is a great tape diagram because if you draw this, then you can solve all those types of questions. Um, and then the other great thing about it is it eventually takes you into ratio. So if you're an elementary school teacher um, and you teach fourth or fifth grade, you have some of those high kids, you can then, after you've taught multiplication comparison, take that, take the same tape diagram and use it to start teaching ratios and they'll be able to see the interconnectedness of everything that you're doing. Okay, so this is an awesome one. And then our last one is our fraction model. Okay, and uh, you can solve addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division of fractions using this model. And this is uh, a great one because this is the one that most teachers dip their toes into first, right? And it typically has to do those questions where, okay, there's 20 baseball cards and one fourth of them are Gavin's right and you need to figure okay what is one fourth of 20 so it's teaching you to divide the 20 into the four equal groups right you could put five in each and then one fourth of them are Gavin so your answer would be five so this is the one most teachers dip their toes into but what I want to encourage you is watch this playlist check them all out because these are awesome so let's take it to uh, what we want you to take with you a different type of tape for this one um, so record this on your tape cassette if you will Tape diagrams are a great way to get your students conceptually understand what is happening in a word problem. So if you're interested in taking your students from just having to learn keywords, right, and then guess on what to do with the numbers to being able to understand, watch these lessons, learn about them. And then, you know, these are just basic introduction lessons. You're going to get to word problems where you're combining them and you're doing two different tape diagrams. And that's awesome. Okay, uh, but learn about these, teach them your students because the moment I, the year I taught these to my students, my test scores went through the roof and I wasn't teaching anything different. I was still teaching the math the same way, how to multiply, how to divide, doing those things. But when I taught these to my students, right, it didn't matter what type of student they were, every single one could understand these and it took some work, right? It wasn't like after a week we had to continually do it, but it got to the point where they were able to use them, they understood. And then what was awesome was I saw a lot of kids take those tape diagrams and then transition into algebra skills of writing algebra equations with a variable to solve questions because that's your next step. That's the goal is to get to that type of math where you're doing it abstractly, but you have to start with the conceptual understanding of what's happening. So we invite you to take a look, continue to watch our playlist. Let us know if you have any questions. You can always email us. Please follow us on all our social media accounts. Uh, we'd love for you to subscribe and join our Instructor Beats family. Again, thank you so much for watching. Instructor Beats, out.